Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this week has been interesting. I did not do as much reading as I was thinking. I actually got hired for a editing job, and so I was really working on that on Monday when I had a vacation, and that kind of took up a bulk of my time, but it was a lot of fun getting to do it. And then just busy with city meetings, you know, with my husband running for city commission, I life gets busier. <laughs> we we actually get more active in the community, which isn't a bad thing, but then there are trade-offs. So jumping into what I have read this week, I finished The Jade Setter of Jan Loon by Fonda Lee. This is a prequel for her Greenbone Saga. I think if you are unsure if you are going to like Jade City and the series, this is actually a pretty good place to start. You, you get in, you get a little bit of terminology, get a little bit of the setup of how the society is, but you're not investing a lot of time. And then for the people who have read the Greenbone Saga, you get to see characters that are going to be in the rest of the series. So I think that this was a very sweet look into the culture of Jan Loon from a different perspective. Even though the story itself is not sweet, it follows Pulo, who is an apprentice with the Jade Setter, and he's frustrated. He thinks that his master could really build up his business and make it better. He doesn't understand why he is content to just have it small. Though it's small, it's in a section of the city that is neutral from the other clans and so gets a lot of patronage, gets a lot of work. And then while he has decided to branch off on his own and to be a lantern man for a bigger clan, the shop gets robbed and one of the other associates gets blamed for the robbery and he knows she didn't do it. And so then it's him following his master and then also trying to figure out what happened. That He's pretty sure he knows who did it, but then is finding, oh wait, that person then was set up by somebody else so that they completely took the fall. It gets a little more complicated, but then also gets to show us the dynamics of the green bones too. Again, if you have not read Jade City or the rest of the series, I think this is a great starting point for this world. And that was the only one I finished. I have read the first two short stories in The Art of Space Travel and other stories by Nina Allen, and I'm not sure if her writing is going to work for me. At least the first two stories, we start on the story and then it just kind of meanders and then it goes this way and then it goes that way, and it very much reminded me of the story structure in Human, Beast, and Ghost, and I did not like it here. I don't like it here either. I'm going to give this a few more short stories, and if we continue to have that pattern, I'm just going to have to stop with this one. Because that meandering pattern for stories is not my favorite. I'm not going to do it in a novel. I'm not, I don't want to do it in a short story. But something I do like how that Nina Allen's doing, like in her second story, I liked it better than the first, but it hints at how it's a near future because it talks about you have the high, main highway and then you have the skyway. So technology has progressed, but really it's trying to say that human nature hasn't. That's kind of what I'm getting out of these two. And then I got 50% into Those Left Behind by N.C. Scrimgore. Definitely classic space opera. I'm understanding the plot, but I think it's too many points of view for me. And I'm saying this because I start, I'm, so I'm getting invested in a point of view, and then we jump to another point of view that's at another point of the galaxy. And I just keep having this thought that if 
the author had focused on one or two points of view, we could still have had a, a really good story. And then she could have done a companion novel of two other points of view showing this is what was going on at the same time in another place. Yeah, I'm not certain what I think about this one quite yet. But like I said, only 50% through. We're in the muddy middle. I'm going to continue reading it because it's one of the contest finalists. And then I have been working on What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I wasn't originally interested in reading this, but it was a nominee for the Cristinelli Award, that which is being run by Kristen at SFF Reader. She got a whole bunch of booktubers together who she knows reads a lot and then had us all fill, like, nominate. She was wanting to see kind of what, or she was, she's wanting to see if the nominations we came up with, how closely they aligned to the Hugos. So her list has been known for us for a little bit of time. So, I mean, I'm reading this for the Cristinellis and this. I'm reading for the Crestonellis as well. This is a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher, and I am finding this really, really interesting. Not typically a horror fan, but I think this is the type of horror I do like. It's more psychological, and I think I remember watching a movie about The Fall of the House of Usher, but it was in black and white, and it was a silent film for one of my film classes, so I kind of know the beats of it already and just already kind of that creepy vibe from that movie and I've just kind of laid it over this and I'm like oh yeah it, it matches so really enjoying this should be finished with this one soon that's also what I will be finishing this week um, I'm also going to go on vacation and I know I can say that because this video is probably gonna come out at the beginning of July after I'm back sometimes vacations I can read a lot more and sometimes I can't so this will be interesting for my writing wrap-up, for my writing wrap-up, I wrote this week. I was very excited. I got onto uh, the stream PJ Scribbles and worked on my music story. And I was just like, I'm writing, I'm writing, even though I was feeling like I don't quite feel like this is actually what's supposed to be happening here in this scene. It, this story is a little bit different for me. I typically don't work off an outline. I just kind of be, write and be like, okay, characters, where are you going? And I kind of know what the end is, so I know what the working to, but I just kind of see what directions they're going to go in between until we get to that end. But on this one, I because I'm following lyrics of music, there's a little bit more of an outline. So I just keep telling myself, this is your zero draft. You're just kind of following this outline for now. Just kind of do it. And in the first draft where you clean everything up and align everything, if this doesn't work or it needs to be different, it'll be fixed. It'll be fine. So I wrote, and I'm happy with what I wrote, even though I'm like, mm, I don't think it's quite there. But again, it's been a long time since I really have gotten into the writing so I really enjoy like I know that typically if I have time like on Tuesdays I like Mia the Vixen of Fiction she does her her sprints on Tuesday nights and then JC Carpenter does her sprints on Wednesdays I think hers are titled right to be and then I'm blanking on PJ Scribble's name at the moment. Tiffany. Her name's Tiffany. But also her hers are typically on Thursdays, so it's kind of like boom, boom, boom. And then I can usually catch something on Saturdays. Fridays are kind of interesting. I don't think I'd normally find productivity spreads on Fridays. trying to get more in the habit of when I have time jumping on because having somebody to write with even though we're not writing the same thing it that mindset kind of has been helping me like okay need to work on something but I'm happy that I wrote 
I don't know if I'm going to be trying to attempt Camp NaNoWriMo or not. There's just a lot going on. I mean, I think right now my goal is just to write more often. Maybe it'll be something like write once a week. Since that's kind of how my brain is feeling. We'll see. And for other media, I finished watching Beyond Paradise, which was a fun series. I kind of hope that they are going to do more because I really like these characters. And I like how they even tied it back to Death in Paradise, the original show. So that was fun. I didn't like the relationship drama between Humphrey and Martha, though. I felt like that was contrived specifically for this season especially because of their personalities are like let's figure it out and then all of a sudden Martha's like nope this is my breaking point you know but I'm doing this actually for your own good and it's like nobody actually believes that ever and I like that her ex is like yeah are you sure you're making the right decision that was nice. And continuing watching elementary just more slowly. Again, busy and I have the options of I can read or I can watch TV. So there's a trade off here. And then continuing to watch Master Chef, enjoying that with my husband. And then Becca from Read Becca told me about this show called Crime Scene Kitchen. So I watched the first episode, loved it. So much fun. It's a baking show where they go in and from clues that are in this kitchen, guess what was made and then the contestants have to then recreate it. So that was a lot of fun. And then last night I introduced it to my husband. He was kind of like, mm, I don't know. And then we like watched three episodes together. So definitely is a winner. Really enjoying that. So thank you Becca for that suggestion. them because I know that I am slow on editing. I want to say like, coming up for like readathons in July, I am going to be participating in the Choose Your Own Adventure that Chelsea Zhao does. I'll, I'll link her video down below as she's explaining this one. This is the second time she's done it. I did the first one, which was Star Trek themed, which I'm not a Trekkie don't really know much about Star Trek. I've watched episodes here and there, but I really enjoyed this, you know, choose your own adventure. Um, in fact, I will link my video that I did of that. I actually did a blog. So I'm excited for this one. This one is more fantasy themed, but even if you're not really a fantasy reader or sci-fi reader, you can still do this and then you can find books that work for what you like. So if you are interested in participating, I think it's this, it's two weeks. Let me look at my calendar. Yes, I think it's the 17th through the 30th. Watch her video. She'll have that. I'm pretty sure it's 17th is the start date for that. So it's two weeks this year. First time it was just one week, but I'm, I'm excited to do this. So that is my readathon for July especially because it's perfect as I'm a mood reader and then hopefully I can read things from my TBR shelves or my library shelf, which is up top. And that is all for my weekly wrap up. Are you guys planning to do any readathons in July? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment. Thank you and have a great day.